Hey folks, I've got a new video here. Uh, if any of you have been following Frank Herman's solder paste dispenser inside Chili Pepper, I uh, decided to add some features today to help him out. And the new feature is called Chili Pepper uh, Pause, and it's a command you can add inside your G code. I don't know if you notice that little Chili Pepper underscore pause, but if you put it inside a comment, um, or anywhere for that matter, you get these new events you can pivot off of. So to show you how it's going to work, I uh, have two tiny G's here. I have my main tiny G inside my controller that runs my X, Y, Z, and A axis. And then I have a second tiny G that really would be like a B axis uh, or even a D axis, as Frank was calling it. This is the equivalent of the solder paste dispenser that Frank has been showing us. Um, and I'm going to show you how to run these two in parallel. So this board right here that I just connected to is technically my solder paste dispenser. Uh, so notice when I hit X, it rotates this NEMA 17 as if it's dispensing solder. And then when I connect to the main controller, my G2, I'm actually now jogging around my main um, device. Okay, so now what we'll do is, uh, let's head back to the top here, and let's go ahead. Uh, we have to load our macro. So the macro, there's actually a sample macro in here now called Watch Chili Pepper Pause to Dispense Solder Paste on Second Controller. And before I run it, I'm going to comment out the code for the on complete method because I'm actually running off of the on execute method. And the difference is Tiny G supports the on execute method, which means Tiny G actually tells us when a line is um, being executed, which is really precise. Uh, and Gerbil only tells us uh, on complete, and really it barely even tells us that. Uh, but serial port JSON server tries to send this back, um, and it does. Uh, you'll see, I'll try and show you the difference. Either way, I'm going to comment that line out. I'll go ahead and hit run on this macro. Notice it just throws up a little flash message. Now I will hide the macro and I will go ahead and hit play. Now if all goes well, what we're getting here is um, as each location for the solder paste dispensing occurs, we jump to it and then notice that the dispenser would dispense at exactly the correct time. And so I think it, you've got to follow the video, but right as it descends, this then moves. Uh, and then once the dispensing is done running, uh, you get sort of a, a really nice set of synchronized movements. Um, these are, uh, again, this is generated G code from uh, Frank Herman's. Um, widget add-ons to the eagle board import but notice that little chili pepper underscore pause that it's pausing at you'll you'll it's probably hard to pick up on it too but what it's technically doing is it's playing up to the chili pepper underscore pause line and then automatically pausing the macro is listening for the event running other g code to the second controller and then unpausing so think about it it's almost like it's breaking the g code file into multiple files where it plays to the end sees that it's um, played to the end, runs its own unique sequence on the second controller, and then starts the original file again. It's actually a lot uh, like how the M6 tool change works um, inside Chili Pepper. Okay, so we'll go ahead and now stop that. And what I'll do is I'll reopen the macro, and I'm going to this time now just do it on the on complete event. I'll... I'll, I'll uh, Cancel out the on execute, and I'll go ahead and hit Control Enter to re-execute this. Now the kicker on um, the on complete or on execute is I have to get rid of line numbers because on Tiny G line numbers create the ability to get the uh, execute of that. And if you don't have those on, you won't get them. Now I turned those off, but that means I got to re-drag in my file. There we go. Now I don't have line numbers. I won't get the unexecuted event. I'll only get the uncompleted event. And we should be able to mimic what would happen on the Gerbil device. So let's go ahead and give that a try. We'll hit play. Okay, so notice that we have a much longer pause. And it's because 
we get back the black checkbox, but not the black checkbox that shows the gray box, meaning we only get back a completed state, not a, an executed state. And so, in fact, we're getting sort of some, oh, you know what, I better hit reload. Um, because I think it's possible that since I'm already in an executed mode, it Chili Pepper just thinks it'll always get the executed. So let's go ahead and reload the um, watch macro and we will scroll to where we set up our subscribe. So I'm going to lock out that. Frankly, I probably don't even need to. Okay, now we'll hide the macro and now we'll hit play. Okay, so there's one pause, motor move, dispense move. Next pause and then we should get a dispense move. There it is. It should unpause, go to the next, and it does. See, we're at line 23. You can see over here on the screen as well that we're jumped to the next spot. So it works, but I had to add a lot of pausing to it to kind of make it work. And uh, it's just nowhere near as sweet as Tiny G. And I, you know, I think it's just one of those things I want to point out why I'm such a big fan of Tiny G is that. We really, that app mega 328p processor that Gerbil runs on is just way too slow. And it's at the end of its life. It's, there's no RAM left. There's no, there's no real ability to add any more to that CNC controlling firmware. And that's why I have moved on to Tiny G because you're in an environment where you can do things like what I'm showing you here without sort of all of this weird rigmarole to try and coerce it into behavior. So. Either way, though, you can still try to pull it off because uh, I just showed you both techniques and hope uh, hope you guys are able to use this to your benefit. All right. Thanks. Bye.